What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, MCJ, back with another video on Power Automate and SharePoint. Today we're looking at a trigger for when an item is added to a document library. So this is when a, a file or folder or, or something is uploaded to a document library, we do our trigger a flow and do something. So let's take a look at it today. Uh, we're in the new Power Automate designer here and we're going to click on add a trigger and we're going to search for SharePoint. We now find the connector and we'll choose see more. And then we'll go down here and we'll choose when a file is created properties only. So what does when a file is created properties only mean? Uh, what this means is that it's only going to bring you back information about the file that's created. It's not going to bring back the file itself. There's a separate action for actually bringing back some data about the file. This is only going to bring back some information about who uploaded it, what the file is, etc. We're not going to bring the actual file content back. So that's what this trigger does, is it, it runs when a file is created and brings back those properties. If you need to do something with that file, as in like put it into OneDrive or attach it to an email, something like that, that's the separate thing. This is just generating when that, triggering when that file is, is put there. So the first thing we need to do is we need to enter a site address. So in this example, we're going to use MCJ site one. You can use an environment variable for this if you want to practice um, some healthy ALM or if you need it to be more dynamic. Uh, library name, we've got two document libraries. We've got one called document and one called MCJ document library. We're going to choose the bottom one here for our testing. And in this instance, we have two advanced parameters. So we'll click show all. Um, we have the same one that we've had in the previous trigger. So the previous triggers run on, on lists only. This is a document library, so this is slightly different. So you may notice that the library name is not list name. And it's also got a different list than the ones that were here. So it's not MCJ list one, MCJ list two. It is MCJ document library. So that's that's what this is. Um, this limit, limit columns by view, again, is similar to those other triggers, though, where if we only want to bring back certain columns and not all the columns, we can create a view and, and choose it from here. There are a couple in here by default, so they use all columns, do not limit, and all documents. Um, and we also have um, this option for folder. So you can create folders inside of document libraries. So you could have a, you know, a, a bigger hierarchy. So you can maybe have one for accounts, one for contacts, one for cases and incidents and things like that. And then you may want to run this flow just on files inside of that folder. Um, you don't want to run it on all, all folders. You just want to run it on that folder. So in this instance, we can select a folder or we can leave it blank for the whole library. So we get the little open folder picker here and we can say, okay, we want to go inside here and choose a folder inside there and only have this run on this. Um, that's how that works. Uh, I'm not going to do it in this instance. I'm just going to leave it blank and try to run on the whole library. We also have this option for how often do you want to check for items? So you can choose your interval, which is in minutes. Um, and your frequency, which is um, or what, interval, which is in numbers, and, and frequency, which is currently set to minutes. Um, and you can choose month, week, day, hour, minute, second. So this is how often it's going to check for new items or new files that have been uploaded. Power Automate is more, uh, for SharePoint, is a polling system, so it will poll to check the um, check if there's new data, uh, and this is where you specify that rather than it being in um, something like Dataverse, where it's, it, it triggers on demand, essentially. So uh, what we'll do is we'll just configure this to, to every one minute um, and we can select the time zone and, and start time. So these, these things are to, these aren't interconnected. The start time is if you want this to start at a certain point in time. So say you're not going to um, be using this for the next two or three weeks, but then in, in three weeks it's going to go live and uh, you actually want this flow to start triggering properly from then. You can specify in the start time when you specify a start time, you need to tell it what time zone that start time is in, so it, it runs at the right time. So that's all we need for this trigger. What we'll do is we'll just add in a compose step underneath that we're not really going to use. Uh, we're going to just look at the data that comes back in the trigger. So we'll choose compose, and then we'll just chuck something in for the sake of it, chuck the title in, and then we'll hit save. Great, now that the flow is saved, we're gonna go up to test. Oops, 
go to test, we'll test this manually and we'll hit test. Now the flow is starting to poll, so we'll go across to our SharePoint site, which is this one here. This is my document library, and you can see I've got all the regular SharePoint things in here. I can create new files and stuff. What we're going to do is we're just going to upload one that I made earlier. So we'll choose file. It's nearly Halloween, so we'll choose my favorite Halloween costume, the Citizen Dev costume, and we'll upload that to SharePoint. So we can see that's been uploaded. We can see the name of it is citizendev.jpg. We can see when it was modified, who modified it, and there are other hidden columns in here as well that we could add on to this view to see them. Um, but in this instance, we're just trying to take a look at, at these ones, and then we'll see what comes back in the trigger. We'll go back to our flow, and we'll wait for this to pick up that a new file has been uploaded. And we can see that our flow runs successfully, and we'll take a look at what we've got in the trigger here. So we can see it triggers, and then if we scroll down to the outputs, we got the headers, we'll take a look at the body. So um, we can see it's brought back an ID. So three is, is just an ID that SharePoint generates to say, hey, there's a new item, we need to do an ID. And then if we scroll down uh, a little bit, we can see things like display name, so who, who updated it, who added this file, it's me, this is my email address and it's tenant. If we scroll down a bit further, um, what we can see is here. The link down here, the link is the uh, a link to the actual file itself, so that's the, the document library file. Then we can see the name, so sits and dev is the name of the file. We can see the file name with extension, so it actually knows that there's an extension on the file, and it's removed that off for the name, so it's in dev.jpg. We can see the path, we can see the full path, and we get a few other pieces of information, but what we don't get is any sort of file content, so we don't get any sort of like encoded file content here that we could then use to, to move the file somewhere else. We'd need to use another action, and I'll cover that in another video. But this is really handy um, if you want to trigger things based on document libraries. Uh, how do you guys use this? Do you use this to run on all document libraries? Do you specify folders? What are you use cases? How are you using it? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, if you could like and share it with your friends, that would be appreciated. If you've not already, click the subscribe button to stay up to date with all my latest videos, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.